Hi, I'm Carrie Leung. Uh, we're at EdTech Guangzhou. Uh, I just finished my workshop on um, introducing fashion tech into the classroom at various levels. And it really is about storytelling and anybody can do it. Just start trying. Make Fashion is actually an adult platform. Uh, it started seven years ago uh, by um, the founder Shannon Hoover. Uh, he's from Canada. Um, they've gone on to do hundreds of runway shows, high-tech runway shows all over the world. And I met Shannon um, about four years ago at a Shenzhen Maker Fair. Um, I brought my kids to the Maker Fair, and my kids were literally dragging me across the fair. You must see this booth. You must talk to these people. You must learn this. And so I went over there, and I talked to Shannon, and um, it was all about fashion tech. And this was a direct response to my kids at the school, and they wanted this. Last year, we just finally decided, like, this has been great for my kids at my school and our community at large. Like, if it works for the adults, why can't we bring it to our whole community? And so we created Make Fashion EDU. Our inaugural event was in May. It was a STEAM runway uh, featuring um, 20 projects on the runway, probably about 200 kids impacted, and uh, participation from about you know, eight schools and other organizations supporting that. So what is Make Fashion EDU? So basically it is storytelling, it is community, it is STEAM into wearables. As an organization, we're really about uh, making relevant education accessible. Um, and so what we do is try to help any educator create this platform at their school. I like to let the kids speak. So here's Miss Haley. Okay. This is my second year doing my fashion. I really love doing it. It's really fun for me. I get to create different things. Um, what has been most impactful for you in doing this? Learning the ways, the, the skills I learned, like soldering, wiring, using my before knowledge to create pieces that I can use to actually change the world. Like, make fashion for me is. Like, I have a problem and I want to solve it, but I want to use it, I wanted to solve it using, for example, plastic. I made a skirt, and the skirt was to show that plastic, you don't have to throw it away in the ocean, you can use it to create beautiful art pieces or clothing, those kind of things. So how Miss Haley used um, fashion tech to express herself is, um, she used it as a platform. Um, you know, she was studying, upcycling and plastics in the ocean and how it's you know creating all kinds of problems um, her piece was actually all those things were um, upcycled plastic she collected like hundreds of plastic bags and uh, she prototyped them she ironed it and she created new materials and then she created a skirt that she walked on the runway with um, so fashion tech has allowed her that and also you know it brought her into uh, tech she really just didn't want to wasn't really motivated in doing any of that stuff, but as you can tell now, she likes to solder and, and it's another skill set, you know, in her tool belt. Um, this is a collaboration, um, Dragon Heart. So this was, uh, these two students, uh, King and Victor, were learning Chinese folk tales. And uh, the folk tale was about, you know, uh, this man loving dragons and his love of dragons were so great that, you know, the dragons took note and the dragons came down to visit this guy and uh, this guy that claimed that he loved dragons so much saw the dragon and like screamed in fear and like ran away. So um, they started collaborating with Daniel here uh, because their, their, their message was the same, right? Like be true to who you are. Um, and so these boys are at the age of, you know, trying to find themselves more about self-identity. And so they express that through their piece, uh, Dragonheart. And then these are our second graders, Athena and Molly from a, a public school. Uh, they wanted to tell the story of their friendship. They've known each other since three years old. They go to school, a swim class together, they eat lunch together, they play princess games together. And so um, they designed you know, this piece to express that you know, friendship's very important. Uh, so Dongwan's a primary school nearby and uh, it was formed from two villages, um, like Dongchun and Wanxiachun, and uh, the villages came together and, uh, and built a school, and actually this school um, accepts students that don't have like um, a city hukou, like a city permit, 
or they might not have like a rental contract that says they're allowed to go to school in the city. Um, I translate it as migrant school, and they're, um, they're quite cut off from traditional support, like receiving government textbooks and directions. They're not quite part of the private school, international school community, um, but they have a crazy strong community. So the story they're told, uh, in a class of 30 students, each student made their own uh, logo, and they're backlit by LEDs, and the logos show things that they have identified in the community that, that bring people together. Um, I think that one right there is a fact that, that this school exists, so, um, so these kids don't have to live back in the countryside with their grandparents, so it's bringing families together. Uh, so this was a good example of kind of a DIT fashion project where 30 students were able to create two pieces. So again, using fashion tech as a, a platform to express themselves or what they believe in. So um, today we actually have Grace with us, one of the participants. Leave your hand, Grace. She happened to be here with her mom. So I pulled her in. I'm like, okay, people will ask you questions about, you know, your experience. Um, so this is Grace's piece. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about it? Should I stand up or? Yeah, up to you. Okay. <laughs> so my piece was based on Polish legend Laconic, and this is my worst inspiration. And except that the carousel reminds me about my childhood, and I wanted to put this magic into my piece. And for me, it looks magical, and I love it. And it's pink, and I love horses. <laughs> But I also learned a lot during this. I learned it how to solve, how to use tech, how to use design, and how to like solve my problems. So that, I mean, like if I couldn't do something with tech, I tried to ask someone, like my teachers, how to do that. And like, yeah, I learned quite a lot. All right, thanks, Grace. Your response was so great with Make Fashion Edu, was because um, I think the kids and the parents and the educators saw it as a pathway to make fashion, which is the adult platform. Um, so we are making that connection for these young designers. Um, you know, some of these pieces are touring with, uh, you know, make fashion around the world to, to show that young designers can do these things and can walk on the runway just as same as adult designers. Um, and so that has been very impactful for the kids. All right, so this is like the mentor deck that I first introduced. Uh, you know, our community to. I'm gonna go over a little bit about this so that you can see how you might wanna set this up in your own community or in your own classrooms. Um, so first, a platform, right? An exhibit like uh, that your community can gather and a purpose for the kids to do this. Uh, so we call it the STEAM runway. So basically we had a fashion tech runway show, um, you know, to exhibit their, their, their creations. Um, of course, uh, we wanted to make it accessible to ages, like all range of ages. So it could be, it didn't have to be an entire ensemble like, like what Grace did. You know, we allowed kids that were young to just create a piece, an accessory piece, and that could be, you know, put on the runway and the models would wear all black. Of course, we want to also be inclusive of everybody. So if you didn't make it on the runway or you didn't want to be part of the runway, um, we encouraged everybody to come to the show and exhibition with their own wearable tech. Um, and for the schools that weren't in Shenzhen, uh, we encouraged them to send in videos and we would play them during the runway show so that you know we can see that this was like a community effort. Oh, we'll have one this May. Um, and of course there'll be a call for designers and we'll extend it to all of you guys. So how did we do this, right? Because as teachers, the, the biggest thing we don't have is time. Like, where do we carve time to do any of this? Um, so in Shenzhen, there were really four common models um, as a project via project-based learning. So I come from a 100% project-based learning school. That was very easy for us to implement it into the classroom or at a unit at your school. Um, you know, uh, we had teachers that, you know, did a literacy unit and the end product was a fashion tech, you know, like a piece, a fashion piece. Uh, you can integrate it into your school's elective, um, STEAM, art, or engineering classes. Uh, we had a couple of teachers um, in our community that did that. Um, and then for a lot of the public schools, it had to come through this way, uh, after school workshops, um, inside or outside of the school. 
Um, and it can also be one-on-one -on -one mentorship, you know, uh, with mostly student independent making, um, you know, and that was Grace. Uh, she was independent, uh, she had some membership, she had some mentorship, she asked when she needed help. Um, and so these are ways to access or in include this into your community. Um, can I say something on that? Yeah. So I think when, when we were doing this, uh, it took about three months. Um, and uh, it, it was a very kind of club-like atmosphere where uh, us and the teachers, if they wanted to, would come about once a week to get support on tech or how to bring stories out of their kids. So we would meet with all the teachers. Sometimes some of the students and the designers would come. Um, and, uh, and everybody was coming from their own perspective. So some school teachers in, during school classes, some with parents helping their kids build projects, and so us as mentors would just meet and kind of solve problems, and then everybody would go back to their own communities and kind of distribute that information and grow the project. Um, so let's see, how do we do this, right? Okay, we talked about the time. Um, just start with an idea or a story and just start doing it. Uh, there are easy projects. they are about, you know, one to three hour starter projects. I would say we had... Um, we had a good period in the very beginning where everybody was introduced to some tech options and we've got some LEDs and stuff to show you guys. Uh, and then there was like two months of design time, which is probably the most valuable time for a lot of the students based off the different areas that they were trying to study. Going through stories, doing sketches, making revisions, working with their mentors or teachers or parents. And then the last month was probably kind of tech time. And, uh, you don't have to be interested in engineering to use technology to help tell your story. So the boys were interested in engineering and they did a lot of programming. Um, and then, uh, oh, actually the Dragonheart one was technically very simple. He didn't spend uh, a lot of time researching how LEDs work. He just used it. So um, right now I'm just gonna show you some tech and show you that is really no, no secret to it. Um, so uh, Corbin's backpack. Um, we don't have the sensors on it, but you can still use it. So here's a battery pack, here's a controller, here's a lady. Literally just plug it in. And uh, instantly your kids, you know, there's all these buttons here and you can go through. Yeah, and it's all, all the wiring is exposed. So it's not like this sealed product that they feel like if they open it up, they're gonna break it. Um, this right here was highly used um, in a lot of the, 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 the projects. Uh, so again, an LED strip, uh, a controller. And um, so these are things that we, we, we worked with um, Shannon to, to create for the kids, uh, you know, from a kid and educator perspective. Um, and then again, you just plug it in. And then if a student has more interest, they can figure out how to get an Arduino and control all these lights and make it do exactly what they want it to do. Yes, yes. So it, yeah, so really it's just plug, plug and play here. Excuse me. Yes. It's probably a really dumb question. Um, do you buy all of this stuff on Taobao? <laughs> yes, so that's a, that was another huge feedback we got. Like how do I source this stuff? Where do I get it? Uh, we will provide you with a, a link to a store um, uh, that is just just for teachers, and and um, it's going to be easy, you know, easier for you to purchase this stuff. Uh, we had a makerspace called MG Space help us do that. Um, but just to let you know, like things are kind of at cost and a little bit more to help them facilitate it for us. But take pictures of this stuff, throw it in Taobao. You'll find it cheaper if you want to. Um, if you don't, you have the time to source. I, I don't know how everybody's budgets are. <laughs> yeah. So, so definitely, like you know, um, like things like this. This is literally. So for the young ones, literally, <laughs> you know, it, it it has a sensor that's a shock sensor, and then you move it, it lights up. So here we can pass this stuff around. I want to ask right now, but would like answered at some point, and feel free to just send it into that group. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you can type in Chinese. Don't wait. What can you on waiting? Fine. 
But again, like the big thing we really wanted to express here, it, it is it is about storytelling, yeah. and that tech can own can be a tool. It doesn't have to be you know a, a, an entire career. <laughs> yeah, this, this doesn't have to be a pathway to engineering. Many of the students that were involved found great engineering opportunities, but a lot of them found other great storytelling opportunities. Um, writing, uh, Athena and Molly. Um, now Athena lives in London, and they're writing stories and they're coming up with more kind of dress ideas. And we hope to get their teachers in London involved. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, teaching drama, I mean, it's fantastic. I'm excited to go back. Yeah. And go yeah. The children will be making their next costumes. Awesome. <laughs> um, one of the absolute cheapest ways here to get kind of lights. Uh, is just to buy bags of, of LEDs, yes. uh -huh. super, yeah. super, and then just buy coin batteries oh. and just tape them together, oh. and it's like instant instant lights. Nice. Um, it te it requires some dexterity if you've got really little ones, um, but they can figure it out pretty quick. Um, we've been able to do it with three year olds. So a three year old, it, it took them a little bit, but they were able to, you know, the the positive is the longer, and the negative is, and and they were able to flip it. And they just clip it on there, right? Yeah. So, so in Cary School, project-based learning, and um, they have an opportunity to replace math class and English class with projects classes. We're not totally focusing on that today because a lot of schools aren't project-based learning. But yeah, this is one way that we get all topics into a project. Here's the the, the QR code for the store if you want easy access. Uh, like I said, you can find this stuff on Taobao, uh, probably at a uh, cheaper, but we're, you know, just due to feedback from other educators, yeah. uh, some of them just prefer one place. <laughs> right. and, and so we've sourced some stuff in one place. So a lot of the stuff you see here is, is on that store. Yeah, so if Taobao is hard, and you could just get samples here and then figure it out yourself, or you can continue to get from there. There's a makerspace in Checo called MG Space that helped us put that together. Yeah. yeah, we have done like 40 minute workshops with this stuff. Um, mostly as a introduction, it's an introduction for the kids, but then we invite like the teachers and parents to come and say, oh, if you were interested in this, this is how you could do more. So Halloween's coming up, right? So making Halloween costumes um, with tech is good. Uh, a lot of this stuff can simply be placed onto Oh, oh, okay. A lot of the a lot of the shakeables and the stuff where you press buttons can simply be put onto like white masks. Um, you can quite easily get involved with fiber optics and diffusion. So putting LEDs kind of behind paper or transparent plastics um, lets the students start to play with how something looks visually. I think it's okay if for your first forty minute class, people just want to put all colors on everything. <laughs> right? Just putting LEDs on things is okay for an introduction. You don't have to jump straight into um, storytelling and having students kind of find uh, um, an inspiration and do writing, uh, uh, do a video about everything. Um, <laughs> so what it really is, um, is purpose, right? Like what is your, your, your purpose of your activity or your learning objective yeah. for what you're trying to do? So. I mean, this can be like an add-on, just as a kind of like window dressing, or you know, to to something you're already creating or making in your classroom. Too, this could be you know your learning goal. Like how 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 do you manipulate this? How are, how are the electrons working? So it's like a sliding scale of, of yeah. you know what your learning goals are. So something I've done with um, with short classes that are introductions to the bigger thing is we will make a piece and then. Uh, video record a short explanation about the piece. Uh, and then we make sure that is on, on WeChat to parents or on some online accessible platform for the students. Um, I will often do uh, an interview with them and then have them do a drawing of their idea and write down kind of what they envision on building. Then they build something. And then we can go back and just recap those four steps. And maybe only spent 10 minutes on each step. So your interview that students do for each other might only be two or three questions. But as long as you write down the steps that they did and they understand the steps, 
they know, oh, next time, maybe I need to do a, a longer interview and capture more of a story. Yeah, um, so uh, a good example would be a two-month unit with, um, on Greek gods, you know, in myth, you know, in goddesses, the myths. Um, the, you know, through studying all of that, uh, you know, I scaffolded in, uh, not scaffolded, like put in electronics and learning, you know, sources of energy, where the end product for the kids was, uh, you know, for them to start, you know, to make a, to embody a Greek god or goddess that they wanted to be. So they created, you know, Apollo, and Apollo had a spinning sun on his back, and, and Perseus, and uh, Medusa, you know, this was fourth and fifth grade, um, you know, Luli made, um, you know, snakes twirl around on her head uh, with servo motors, um, but that was through the unit of learning about Greek mythology. So that's, yeah. that's one way to integrate it in. I think a big thing about all the different lights on here is many of them were simple, some of them weren't, and uh, a lot of the times when we were meeting, we were telling the teachers that you don't have to be an expert on this. Even if the kids are little and want you to tell them how to solve the problem, um, that's, not, that's not something that you have to learn first. Uh, it's totally okay to tell the kids, here are your materials, try to figure something out. Uh, so we found Make Fashion useful because there's so many kind of online examples that kids could go online and research and look it up, or parents could go online. Um, but also there was always really simple alternatives available. If they just wanted to get something done quickly, or if they just wanted to make red lights, we would say, okay, find something red and put it in front of the white LED. Um, yeah, big, big focus here is teachers don't have to be experts on this stuff. You know, the biggest takeaway for me on this, besides community and the kids, is really that the, the educators and the teachers felt that they could do this. Um, and because, you know, the teachers felt like they could do this, it's like a cascading effect, right? It goes back in the classroom, and the kids do it, and the parents do it. And so, um, you know, I really encourage all of you guys to, to try some of this on any level, varying level, um, in your classroom, in your community, in your organization, because it's, it's totally doable. Yeah, cool. Thank you for your time. For more content like this, you can subscribe, uh, make sure to like us or share out to other teachers. If you use WeChat, I'll post my ID below. You can add me and in my moments, you can see lots of stuff like this. At Steamhead, we're not just about teaching technology. We're about using technology to make education more relevant. Check out our website at steamhead.space.